you can't separate Texas from barbecue, and it wouldn't be wrong to declare Texas as the world's barbecue capital. You've got Dickey's Barbecue Pit with its array of meats and Bill Miller Barbecue with its barbecued meats. Like Dickey's, Bill Miller's rise as a top restaurant in San Antonio, the southern part of Texas, is warm and juicy. Bill Miller Barbecue is quite successful, and proof of this is that it owns all its locations and a distribution center. But there's another way to know. What's that, you wonder? You know a business is successful when its host city decides to rename one of its streets after the owner of the company. The first restaurant is near Goliad Road's five-point intersection, Clark Avenue, Offer Street. However, in 1994, the city of San Antonio, Texas, decided to honor one of their own by changing Offer Street to Bill Miller Lane. So what did the business do to deserve this kind of honor? The business has the habit of giving back to the city, and the family members running it have been named the Corporate Family of the Year. The company bought a failed mall called the Fiesta Plaza. Then the company donated the mall to the University of Texas at San Antonio, and the building became the university's downtown campus. The city of San Antonio didn't forget the gift, and they gave the business a befitting gift by honoring its founder. The street name change was celebrated with an impressive parade and even ribbon-cutting ceremonies. The honor the city gave the business coincided with a period when its expansion was on the rise. In a way, the company got a job-well-done commendation for its successful business operations. Bill Miller, the company's founder, always had an eye on the food business. He initially worked as a cook before he was drafted into the Second World War, but even then, he was faithful to cooking. Miller was a mess sergeant in the U.S. Air Force, and he continued to hone his cooking skills. When the war was over and Miller got discharged, surprisingly, he didn't continue with his cooking. He chose a different path, the path that would lead his business to have around 77 locations. He became an Eggman, and no, we don't mean the villain from the Sonic games. Miller took a $500 loan from his father to create an egg and poultry business with his wife, Isla Faye Miller. The man then began to deliver eggs and chicken to his South San Antonio customers, using his scooter to move from one house to another as he did his job. But the man wanted more, and to achieve more, he needed to change his line of work. And if you like to learn about the history of your favorite eateries, be sure to subscribe for more content like this. So by 1953, the egg and poultry business became a fried chicken business, and Miller became a cook once more. Turns out you can take the cook out of the kitchen, but you can't take the kitchen out of the cook. So he didn't completely change his line of work. He still worked with poultry, but found ways to make more money from it. The first building Miller got was a 12-foot by 24-foot building, and a takeout restaurant was born. The first day he opened his fried chicken business, he made only $17. Still, he continued, and he was just a step away from creating a company that would outlive him. But before then, Bill expanded his store's menu to include hamburgers, before eventually shifting to barbecuing meat. This would be the decision that would help the business bring in sales, and it would be what the business became known for. The business expanded slowly, with a second store opening after 10 years of operation. Eventually, it put its central office in downtown San Antonio with the building facing the old San Antonio Police Department headquarters. Miller had an iron grip on quality because he had a secret. Apart from the fact that Texans love barbecue, the business stood out from the many barbecue restaurants that existed at the time. The restaurant was no sonic drive-in, but it had a quick and efficient way of preparing its meals so that within five minutes, customers had their meal and were ready to go. Such speed was something most restaurants couldn't offer their customers at that time. The barbecue restaurant's secret was its central commissary. Its meats, loaves of bread, and pies came from this central commissary. Eventually, the business grew bigger, and so did the commissary, which it built by strictly following the U.S. federal government's meatpacking guidelines. The government officials at the city of San Antonio and the state of Texas inspect the commissary from time to time to ensure that the business maintains quality. The founder managed the first restaurant and was the cook. His wife, Faye, worked with him as the cashier and was also the hostess. Faye did all of this while also raising four children. The Miller children weren't left out of the business either. They grew up watching how their parents ran the company, then they began to help out during the weekends and the summer holidays. Even when his son Ballas got into college, he remained involved in the business. 
Bob was so confident in his son that he planned a vacation to Europe around the time his son was between his junior and senior college years. While the founder took a well-deserved break to Europe, his son ran the restaurant in his place during the summer. At some point, Ballas decided he no longer wanted to be a teacher. So instead of going to teaching school, he decided to make a career out of working at the Bill Miller Barbecue. So when Ballas graduated from college in 1966, Bill began to reduce his working hours with the company and partially retired. The remaining brothers, John and Douglas, also decided to make a career out of working in the restaurant. So as they graduated from college, they also joined their brother Ballas. Their sister married, and her husband, Louis Vance, joined his in-laws in managing the company. And all of them have worked together for more than three decades. The brothers and Vance strictly operated the business following Bob's operational model. They continued to use the barbecue pit that Bob designed in the 50s. Bob even designed the large-scale pits that the company currently uses and can barbecue 2,500 pounds of brisket at a go within 18 to 20 hours. Bob Miller is passionate about his barbecue and quality, so it makes sense that the children didn't change how the business made its barbecue. Speaking of making its barbecue, the brothers and their brother-in-law continued to cook with Hill Country live oak wood in the company's brick pits. Despite technological improvements, they stuck with their old ways and didn't switch to natural gas or electric grills. The boys also continued maintaining the commissary through which the company distributes its products. Also, the firm continued its catering business, which could handle crowds as large as 10,000 and as small as 100. The Millers and Vance are strategic in their operations and how they acquire real estate for their business. However, these men sometimes fail to get lucrative locations for the company. One of their failures would be the botched purchase of the 12,000-square-foot 209 Alamo Plaza. The plaza was the location of a former doll museum, which is opposite the Manger Hotel in downtown San Antonio. The business had a vision for that location, a three-story building. The company wanted to remodel the building to use the first and second floors as the dining sections and the basement as the kitchen. However, because the business was unsuccessful in acquiring the building, its vision wouldn't become a reality. It wouldn't be the only time the company would goof up. Did you know that the business isn't even sure of its own name? The business launched a campaign to correct people who didn't spell its name right. According to the company, its name was Bill Miller and not Bill Millers. The company thought it had achieved something, but it only offended the customers within its city. They protested that the company didn't even know its own name, and guess what? They were right. When the barbecue chain opened its first store in the 50s, its newspaper advertisements put its name as Bill Miller's. Their advertisement in the 70s revealed the same thing. Somewhere along the line, after the 70s, the business removed the apostrophe. Despite its goofs, its customers are loyal, and Bill Miller Barbecue knows this. Apart from giving back to their host city, they regularly appreciate their customers. They even let a section of their customers use their premises for their fan club activities. The company has many fan clubs, but the most highly ranked one in the company's eyes is the Bill Miller Buddies Coffee Club. The club began with three members and grew. However, in 2013, the fan club broke up as the firm remodeled its stores and removed the separate rooms. Bill Miller Barbecue began from eggs and poultry to become a steadily growing barbecue chain in San Antonio. It has managed to avoid controversies and hold a firm connection with its customers. However, wouldn't it be great if the company could expand out of Southern Texas? Or do you think it should continue to expand within the region? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to support our channel.